part of our morning devotions, I would like to read in your hearing the Beatitudes. And that's found in Matthew 5, verses 1 through 12. If you would, turn with me in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 5, verses 1 through 12, the Beatitudes. And seeing the multitudes, he went up to the mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him and, and said, and he opened his mouth, and he taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manners of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they, the prophets which were before you. Amen, amen. Today, I welcome you to new members class. Today, we will be studying again session one and two. And it's usually filled with fellowship, pictures, video presentations, and get acquainted activities. But first of all, I would like to introduce myself. I am yours truly, Minister Douglas Petty. And the members of the committee are Sister Harriet Gooch, Sister Michelle Rogers, and Sister Cheryl Williams. We thank God for these ladies in ministry. Uh, they keep things moving right along um, like a well-oiled machine. They are an intricate part of new members class, and we look forward to fellowshipping together as we grow in Christ. If you have any questions or you don't understand something, please feel free to ask, and one of us will assist you in getting what you need. Today is uh, usually a time when we have a meet and greet session, so that at that time, we'll be introducing our newest members of our church and get acquainted with the activities of our church. And normally at the beginning of this class, we will receive a small handbook where you may take notes and keep up with classes that you may have completed or haven't finished as of yet. Items that are needed for our class is a pen and a pencil, a Bible, and an open heart to receive God's word. New members' classes have changed from 16 weeks to eight weeks, and we want to make our time together exciting as we study God's word and learn about our church and church polity. It is a good thing to know your church family. Amen? Amen. Good thing to know. Uh, really wish that you all were here with me so that we could might even take a little tour around the church and I'm gonna tell you about our church our church started in 1862 and still in existence in 2020 our history uh, indicates that there are days before the Civil War our fathers worship in the church of the white masters and many of our churches that exist grew and developed from a small group of black worshipers who sat in some designated session of white people's church. Now that's good news that we know that we uh, have been serving the Lord here at First Baptist Church. And I believe that we are the oldest church in Newport News for black people. So that's good news to know that you are part of First Baptist Church Denby. Uh, in 
July 1862, and on the behalf of the company of baptized believers and recognizing counsel who was called to meet at the Denby Baptist Church, the church building was owned by the white community, but has been vacated by them because of the Civil War. And that was in uh, 1862. Um, we did learn about um, the graves that are outside of our church building, um, located where the uh, wrought iron fence is, that some of the uh, members are buried there that were from slavery. So that uh, lets us know that we have history. And it's good to know that you have history. Edward Diggs was a freed uh, slave and in 1861 joined the Union Army on October the 5th, 1863 and served until October 5th, 1866. He was a corporal. So we had officers back then that served uh, in the United States Army uh, in the Civil War uh, and they're buried right outside. Um, that would be something good for you to go and take a tour of. And we used to be called the Colored Denby Baptist Church. Um, Harris, Coniz, Carey, uh, and Enos Washington and Samuel Bailey were chosen as deacons. They were our very first deacons. And Reverend Banks is listed in the Who's Who in Ward County. 1850 to 1880 as a farmer who was married with three children and he could not read or write and he also was listed as a slave or a negro but rather a mulatto uh, if you go down the corridors uh, near the sanctuary and look in the curio that we have the pictures of all of the uh, past ministers and you see someone in there he looks like he's white but he's a mulatto. Mulatto, he, he looks like a white man. So when I first came here, I thought that he was our first leader, that he was white, but he's considered mulatto. Uh, after Reverend Banks' resignation and uh, ordination council was called to consider setting apart Brother T.G. Wright as a minister of the gospel, and Reverend Wright was ordained and became the second pastor serving from 1863 to 1869. These dates are very important to us uh, to give us a history of where we come from and where we are today. Uh, during the pastorate of Reverend T.G. Nettles, 1870 to 1883, a larger house was built to accommodate an increased membership and the church was renamed First Baptist Church of Ward County. And other ministers were Reverend Walt uh, Talton and J.B. Whiting, who served from 1883 to 1887. And Reverend Robert H. Nazareth was elected as leader in July 25th, 1887, and was ordained in August 23rd, 1890. And during this period, the congregation continued to increase and build and was added to the church and renovated. His pastor ended in 1912 after 25 years of service. He was buried in the old church cemetery. That's good news to know that we have history going way back. And we're going to bring it a little bit closer. If you walk through, again, the quarters of the church, you'll see different pictures of the old churches that we had, the old church buildings and the church building that burnt down. Uh, it's good to know your history, where you come from, and it's good to know your future, where you're going to go to, but you first have to have a history in order to get a future. Amen? Amen. From 1912 to 1947, the following Ministers pastored the congregation, and that was Reverend T.C. Williams from 1912 to 13, and under whose pastorate cemetery, number two, 
was purchased. We have two cemeteries. We have the uh, slave the slave cemetery to our left, and our newest cemetery to our right, uh, where um, many members um, that have uh, joined here are buried. And sometimes just take a walk through and look at the dates on the gravestones out there. Take a tour, take your children to see the past of the church members that helped keep First Baptist Church Denby alive. When Ward County merged with the, count, with the city of Newport News in 1958, First Baptist Church Denby became the oldest organized black church in the city of Newport News. It also became the oldest First Baptist Church in the area. That's very important to know that history about your church. If somebody asks where you go, you can even share it. I go to the oldest First Baptist Church in this area. Amen? Prior to that time, First Church of Newport News was the oldest. First Church of Newport News was the oldest prior to us. Reverend Samuel Flagger served from 1959 to 1963. The church bought its first electronic organ under the pastorate of Reverend T.T. Uh, T. Brown, 1963 to 1967. And under the pastorate following the accomplishments were made, street lights were purchased. Now we have street lights all over. That's, that's good. We've come a long ways. You know, when back in the day, we didn't have street lights, and now our church parking lot is uh, lit up. Then from 1968 to 1973, uh, Reverend Albert L. Hill actively uh, recruited the new members and initiated a bond sale of $100,000 to build a new church. Wow, back in the day? That's a lot of money, $100,000. Uh, on February 18, 1971, ground was broken for the new building, and a cornerstone was laid on July 3, 1971. The modern facility completed air condition, was built at a cost of $200,000, including furnishings. The first service was held in the new building, in May 1972, the week of celebration began June 25th, 1972, and the church was licensed to operate the Denby Area Daycare Center, October 1972, a church nursery and a nurse's aid was also organized. Isn't it good to know that we have a church school here? We have grown a lot since we've been here at First Baptist Denby. Amen. But we're bringing it on home, uh, bringing it up closer to dates that some of us can remember. Uh, Reverend Herbert Hill began his pastorate on October 18, 1974. In addition to the activities uh, Broad's already uh, presented in the church, a civic form of Board of Christians education was organized in 1975. The Cross Bulletin Board and a steeple were dedicated in June 1975. Reverend Hill licensed many ministers and ordained three ministers, including the first female minister, and that was Reverend Dolores Borum. Uh, some of these ministers are now past pastoral positions, and some are assistant pastors' position. The 8 o'clock worship service was added to our church worship in 1981. So church family, we've been doing uh, 8 o'clock service for a long time, since 1981. A church historian, Miss Evelyn Banks, was also elected under Reverend uh, Dr. Hill. Amen. And prior to um, the elections, the church clerk and other lay, lay members maintain a historical data on the church. 
Uh, if you go out in the vestibules, you will uh, see as you come through the quarters a, uh, a church history um, display. And uh, sometimes just take the time and, and look and see the pictures of old and the pictures that we have now because, you know, First Baptist Church is a great church, a growing church, a loving church. Now we're going to move on up to October 31st, 1987. A ceremony was held for the laying of the cornerstone of the new church on January 15th, 1988. Reverend Hayward Barnes was voted on by the church to serve as an interim pastor. And on March 20th, 1988, the Reverend Ivan T. Harris of Hampton was presented to the church body by the pulpit committee and voted in as uh, our pastor-elect of First Baptist Church Demi. And Reverend Harris officially began his tenure as pastor from May 22nd, 1988, 60 days after the above date. So Reverend Harris, who uh, just retired last May, um, served our church family for 31 years. And we thank God for his leadership uh, here at First Baptist Church Denver. He brought us a mighty long ways. Amen? Amen. So uh, right now we uh, have a pastoral committee in place that is now uh, looking for us a new leader. And uh, we thank God for the pastoral committee, and we pray that their decisions would affect First Baptist Church another 31 years. Uh, it's very hard to come by a leader, and a leader is someone that's given to the church by God, okay. and we pray that God would send us that leader. Uh, Pastor Harris served as the under-shepherd for more than a dozen associate ministers. He also leads a congregation flocks of approximately 1,500. Uh, a large official board that includes 18 deacons and 14 trustees, a Christian board of education, three choirs, and more than 30 different committees and organizations and ministries. Church family, we have a lot of growing to do. And as we have uh, new members to come in, which you all will be a part of uh, someday. We pray that uh, your hands and feet and eyes would all be a part here at First Baptist Church. Amen. 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 Um, we have so many programs that we want you to be a part of uh, as we grow. Uh, we have a service called Women's Day and June 1996 was highlighted with the barrel of the time capsule that will be open in 10 years, which was in 2006. We did bury a time capsule in 2006 uh, and was, I mean, in, 2000, in 1996 and was open in 2006. Now, I think it would be a good thing if, since we have gotten to uh, another time in the 20s, that we um, put together some type of time capsule for the next century to see where we started and see where we come to. Um, it's always good. The Bible tells us to uh, number our days. And uh, we would be able to see children born, uh, go to first grade and graduate from college, and then we would see them grow from college to uh, getting married and starting a family and the tradition starts all over again. And I know some of you all have already seen my grandchildren. They were little babies and I was holding them on the front row of the um, deacon side. And now they're almost grown. <laughs> it's amazing how, how time passes, but we thank God for that. The fruits of our, the labor of First Baptist Church leaders are great, and many family members of our um, forefathers are still active in this church. And many adults who are taught 
in the Sunday school and in churches are now pastors and ministers. Isn't that good news? That we are raising up ministers and pastors. You know, you don't want someone to just stay uh, dormant. You want them to grow. And we want you to grow here at First Baptist Church. That's why it's important that you know something about your history, know something about um, new members so that you can get a, a, a feel of who it is that you're worshiping with and most of all, who we're serving. Most of our young people are doing great today because of their spiritual background that they received here and carried with them while pursuing their studies and beginning their families. Amen? Amen. I, I've seen so many that I remember uh, young grow up and now are married. <coughs> Excuse me. The First Baptist Church Denver is experiencing a new level of spirituality as we strive toward putting God first. And we have so many qualified, gifted, and dedicated members within our church body. Amen? Amen. Who, along with other pastors, are helping members to meet the challenges of using modern technology for teaching, preaching, and learning. Uh, this equips the entire congregation to grow spiritually and intellectually in the Word of God. For our ultimate goal is to glorify God through our obedience and to serve Him um, and to uh, our fellow man. Thanks be to God for 156 years. Amen. 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 156 years. Thanks to our past leaders who paved the way for us, and thanks to our present leaders who are striving to help us develop um, the total person to be strong Christian men and women. Amen? Amen. Now, uh, you will be given a uh, church roster of the leaders. Um, you will be given their phone numbers, uh, and they, these numbers are associated with the deacon and deaconess, and they will become your tribal leader uh, based on the month that you were born. Um, you will get a list of those leaders and their telephone numbers. Uh, they also will become your prayer partners uh, as you first joined the church, you were introduced uh, to um, the deacons, and then we had a prayer ministry to bring you back here to the new members class, and we thank God for them also, and they also will become your prayer partners, and they will be keeping in touch with you, and I know you'll look forward to them keeping in touch with you, amen? amen. But normally, at this time, we would have our deacon and deaconess to come in and tell you the month of the tribe that they uh, will be uh, from January to December. And what you would do, you would raise your hand if you were born in the month of January. And in the month of Jan January, that's called the tribe of Judah. So is anyone in here born in the month of January? Amen. That's me. <laughs> But I look forward to seeing you guys when we can all meet and greet. Um, the deaconess, uh, they also will be assisting you and calling you if you have any requests because you may not always be able to get to the pastor. The deacon and deaconess would be uh, glad to assist you in any way that they can. And there's the new members committee. That would be uh, Sister Gooch. Sister Williams and Sister Rogers, who will be able to assist you. Um, their phone numbers would be available to you. If you have any kind of need um, here, we would try our best to uh, service you. Amen? Amen. And um, our tribal leaders, I'm going to name the uh, month and the tribe that you would be uh, a part of. 
and I'm going to go through them. And if you're born in the month of June, January, your tribe is Judah. If you're born in the month of January, you are the tribe of Judah. And I'm talking about your tribal leaders. These are the people that you would be in contact with, especially if you have it. Uh, you need prayer. Uh, you need a visit at the hospital. Um, you won't always be able to get in contact with the pastor, but you will be able to get in contact with them because we do provide you with the phone number. Now for the month of February is Zebulon. The month of March is Issachar. The month of April is Dan. The month of May is Gad. The month of June is Asher. The month of July is Naphtali. The month of August is Benjamin. The month of September is Ephraim. The month of October is Manassas. The month of November is Reuben. And the month of December is Simeon. And I know that you all fit somewhere in that. I thank you all for uh, listening on today. Uh, as we discussed uh, chapter one, uh, session one, and session two, I thank you all. I pray that something was uh, said and done that would enhance your spiritual growth. And I pray that uh, I would see you all next week where we will be studying session three and four. To God be the glory. I look forward to seeing you again. It's in Jesus' name. But first, let us bow for a word of prayer as we end this session. Gracious God, we thank you again for all that you've done and doing in our lives. We thank you, Lord, for new members class. Lord, that we can get application and learning. Oh, God, help us to be the hands and the eyes and the ears, a part of the body, Lord, that would edify you. Lord, we ask that we walk as upright men and women before you and that we too, Lord, would be accountable as we go through this life. Lord, we pray for understanding of your word. We pray for wisdom. We pray for knowledge. We pray for peace on earth and goodwill towards men. We love you and we praise you and we honor you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. We pray. Amen.